Hey, it's Jeff Nelson. I'm a realtor with IXL Real Estate Eastern Shore. And I had somebody comment on a recent video about uh, doing a video on home inspections. And so I thought I would do that. I haven't done one yet and I probably should have done it by now. So anyway, here you go. I've got um, almost 20 years experience as a realtor and uh, there's hundreds of homes and hundreds of inspections. Uh, behind my belt, so uh, I actually didn't do the home inspections myself, but um, of course, but I have been a part of them. So um, if I were to say there was probably the number one piece of advice I would give to a home buyer today, and that would be to get a home inspection. So this is a very important topic, and I'm going to jump right into it. It's going to be a lot to cover, and so uh, let's do it. So if you ever heard the term, well, everybody's heard this term, you can't judge a book by its cover. This is especially uh, right when it comes to home inspections because in purchasing real estate, because it might look great on the outside. You know, you're, you've been looking at homes all day, all weekend, all week, and uh, you find one that's just perfect. It looks perfect. It's, got the, it's just got the appliances, the open floor plan, the tall ceilings, it, everything looks great, but you don't know what's going on behind the walls or under the house in the crawl space or in the attic. And so home inspection is uh, going to tell you all those things. And the big, one of the biggest reasons you should get a home inspection is, it is they are uh, fairly inexpensive. One of the reasons why you should get a home inspection is they are fairly inexpensive to get. So let's say four to five, four to six hundred dollars uh, for a home inspection, let's say, right in that ballpark, depending on the size of the home and so on. Um, well, if you're going to spend a few hundred dollars now with potentially spending thousands of dollars down the road after you've bought the home, maybe a year or two or three years from now, because you didn't get a home inspection, it really makes sense. So this is kind of a risk versus reward type of thing, and it's uh, you're just better off to be safe than sorry. So spend a few hundred dollars now to get some peace of mind that everything is going great. You know, you know the exact ages of the uh, major components of the house, like the, like the water heater, um, the HVAC, all the appliances. Um, they're going to they're gonna give you the, the rundown, and I'm going to go into that a little bit later. But I want to talk about the cost. The cost is... It really, in the whole scheme of things, I mean, you're just getting ready to plop up, you know, like, what, four, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars on a property. It just makes sense to spend a few hundred dollars to have a professional who's been trained at this, who's licensed, to go in there and check that house out for you. So, number one, it's fairly inexpensive. Well, I just mentioned it, but the second one is peace of mind. So, <clears throat> you know, let's face it, buying a home can be very stressful. And um, if you're going into buying a home and not knowing the true condition of the property, that can really add to your stress. So it just makes sense. Plus, knowing the weaknesses and strength, strengths of your home can really add to more peace of mind. You're going into that property, you're signing that paperwork on closing day, knowing the true condition of your house, good or bad, at least you know what it is, if, you know, if it's a home inspection, we're gonna get into this in a minute, that's, that it's a contingency, but just knowing is peace of mind. So let's take away stress from our life. All right, for most people, buying a home, buying real estate is, for most people, is gonna be the biggest investment of their lives. So um, what you're getting by hiring a certified and licensed home appraiser, you're getting an education on your biggest investment. So they're going to go into the crawl space if there is one. They're going to go into the attic. They're going to go on top of the roof if they can. Um, they're going to look under cabinets and the closets, wherever there's components, electric, electrical, plumbing, uh, sewage, all of that. They're going to they're look at all those items, all of those major components of your house. They're going to look for uh, stress fractures and settling of the house <clears throat> and give their opinion on those things. Um, windows, shingles, the life of these items. So you're getting a very 
detailed report. The, the people that I use here in Lower Alabama, um, are, they both use uh, very detailed reports. You're emailed these like 30 page documents that really details everything about your ho home. So you are getting an education on the biggest investment that you'll probably ever make. All right, um, home inspections can uncover potential safety issues. Um, you know, you think about mold or you think about radon. Well, we don't really have radon issues here. That's mainly where there's a lot of boulders. So a lot, that's really in the West, Midwest. But anyway, um, mold, mildew, uh, faulty wiring, um, fire issues, things like that. These things can be uncovered by, uh, by a home inspector. So even if a house looks great, even the, something as simple as a leaky pipe could cause mold or mildew down the road. Uh, carbon monoxide was what I was trying to think of earlier. So anyway, these inspectors are able, a lot of them, I think both of the ones that, that I recommend down here, uh, they have these um, moisture meters that they can put on a wall. Like for instance, if there's looks like a watermark on the wall, they can put this meter up there and see if it's active or not. It, 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 yeah, it detects the moisture in the wall. So those are great things to have. So potential um, safety hazards are uncovered with home inspection. So could be big, several hundred dollars to uncover that stuff. Another thing that a home inspector will do is they're going to find the age or the approximate age, like for instance, the shingles, they're gonna give an approximate age on the life of those shingles. But they can find out the, uh, the age of say the water heater and the HVAC and appliances. And what this does is this gives you um, budgeting for maintenance of these things down the road, which is really great to have. So like if, if you're thinking the HVAC is only a couple years old, but in, in fact, after talking to the home inspector, it's like more like 12, then you probably have another, I don't know, I don't know how long they go, maybe 20, a total of 20 years, I think, that uh, maybe that HVACs are, are good. So anyway, it gives you an idea of a timeline for budgeting on maintenance. So a really good, uh, another good aspect of uh, having a home inspection and what it could do for you. Okay, structural issues. Now, a structural issue can make your dream home become a bad dream like overnight. And this, this is something I also look for when I'm you know, out showing property. I'm looking around. I'm not a home inspector, but I know what a crack looks like. And um, I'm looking around too at things like these, things like um, structural cracks. And a lot of times, like concrete's going to crack no matter what happens, concrete like driveways, or like garage floors, I mean, they're going to, it's going to crack. It's just the nature of concrete as things settle. But what um, inspectors and what, like even engineers, what they're going to look for are cracks that are, um, I, think, I think the rule they use, if you can fit a nickel into that crack, it's, it's something that you should be concerned about. But if you see some hairline cracks, like uh, in your garage floor, even if there's a lot of them, that's usually not meant uh, as something that you should, you know, be alarmed at. So, um, but structural issues, if you see like on the outside, a lot of times if there's wood siding and then there's a brick uh, apron that goes around the house and you see, you know, fairly large cracks going up um, in between, like in the mortar joints, um, that's, and they're, they're pretty wide, that's something that you should be concerned about. So um, a home inspector is gonna give you another set of eyes, but they're professional eyes um, they, they're trained to look for these things. So structural items is, um, is something that is definitely something that you would want to know about because it can be, it, it would be extremely costly to fix. So there you go, structural issues. Okay, as a realtor, you know, I'm very much, a big part of my business and my job is, um, you know, to write contracts for real estate. That's a big part of what I do. And a big part of contracts are contingencies and a contingency is something that has to be done before something else is done so a home inspection if uh, the buyer opts to have one which hope hope they do um, but if they opt to have one then they have a certain amount of days 
usually 10 days or so, uh, to get that home inspection done and get the report back to the seller or to see if there's a, you want any repairs done or not. But what a home inspection contingency is, in my opinion, it is the biggest ace in the hole. That's not right. It's the biggest ace up your sleeve so far as protection for the buyer because you can get out of the contract and not be penalized in any way. So you, you put earnest money down when you buy real estate, right? So um, that's really there if you default on the contract. But if you get a home inspection and you go by the rules and you stick to the time frame that's involved, then um, you get your home inspection done and you're not happy with the home inspection, you can get out of the contract. So that is a way you're not going to be bound to purchase this property if you find big stru structural in, uh, issues that you don't want to deal with yourself. And um, as long as it's done within the time frame of the contract, it is a way to get out and uh, you're not penalized in any way, shape or form. So that's a big one. All right, so inspections are also a great negotiating tool. Now there's three things that can happen. After you get the home inspection, there's three things that could happen here. Um, you can buy the house as is, after you get the home inspection, you can have the seller uh, make some repairs you, and the seller would have to agree to them, of course. Um, or the seller can make no repairs and you, know, you, you then can decide whether you want to stay in the deal or not. So, um, but it is a great negotiating tool. Just, just realize that uh, you're, you're purchasing this house so we wanted, we always try to negotiate and in negotiation, everybody wins, you know, everybody gets something. It's a give and take type, type situation. So you don't want to negotiate, negotiate your way right out of, uh, you know, buying this house that you love, but we want to try to give you the best deal as possible. So part of that is on me and negotiating that, but um, we don't typically want to ask the seller, you know, to, I don't know, paint a wall. You know, those are cosmetic issues. Um, when I usually advise, uh, I usually advise my buyers to negotiate safety things or big, big money things. Um, but cosmetic issues, usually, uh, you know, those usually aren't things that you typically would want to negotiate with. But they are, inspections and contingencies are good negotiating tactics. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is uh, new construction. Um, most people would think that if you're buying a new constructed home, newly constructed home, that you won't need a home inspection um, because they know, you know, the county, in our, in our case down here in Baldwin County, Alabama, um, you know, there's, there's city, county inspectors that come out and give their final approval, which gives you a uh, certificate of occupancy um, so you can live in it. All right. Um, some people have, I mean, that's law. That has to happen. So a lot of people think that a home inspection is not needed. And again, um, although it is highly advised that you get a home inspection, it is optional. So, um, you know, that's on you, the buyer, if you want to forego a home inspection on new construction, all right? However, I still, new construction or not, I still recommend a home inspection. I have been in situations where I was with the buyer, they got a home inspection on a new construction home, and the uh, county or city inspectors uh, missed something, but the home inspector caught it, and it was a pretty big deal. I remember one case in particular, the uh, ductwork in the bottom of the crawl space was not hooked up properly, and a lot of the um, AC was going right into the uh, crawl space. So would they have caught it later? Probably not, because they, I mean, in their opinion, they were done with it. Um, so it could be costly, even on new construction, to not get a home inspection. So there you have it. I hope this was useful to you. If you are buying in Low Alabama, primarily Baldwin County, and uh, you're working with me and you're a buyer, I'm, you, you always will hear the words from me, okay, let's talk about a home inspection. I've got a few people that I use. They're very professional. They've been vetted by me and my clients. And so... Um, Anyway, if you are buying in, uh, or selling in Baldwin County, give me a ring. Here's all my information.